but conservative and and let them define themselves but i'll be very clear it's one of the things i like about trump which is his his staff apparently read both of my last two books and used some of the talking points for my solutions for america in his talking points and one of those talking points is put tariffs on chinese goods until they stop putting tariffs on our goods perhaps i should have added that see i understand manufacturing most people in radio have no business interests outside of radio i do and i will tell you you go try export your product outside of america and you'll discover what free trade is not there is no such thing as free trade they tariff our goods to death they tie our american goods up in red tape like you cannot believe and so you're talking about again talk show hosts or whoever maybe well-meaning who don't understand business they've never been in business they don't understand the first thing about it. They read textbooks. They give policy speeches. Maybe they went to Harvard, I don't know, or Missouri State, or, you know, Trent and you. I don't know where they went. But the thing is, a tariff is necessary to stop the bad behavior of a competitor who's screwing you when you try to export products to them. So I don't think you have to go into a, de a decision based upon <clears throat> saying, I am a um, nationalist. Where should I stand? I think you need to say, I'm a commonsensical person. And in order to rebuild American business, we need to put tariffs on foreign goods. It'll have a, a positive effect on our manufacturing, for example. Think about what would happen, and think about what did happen to America. Let's review together. Let's go back a number of decades. We had the most advanced electronics industry in the world. I'm talking in the 60s, remember? I don't know, how old are you? 53, Mike. All right, so you remember when we used to make televisions in America? We had American brands. And do you remember what the Japanese did to kill our television industry? They, they produced televisions, and they dumped them on uh, American consumers at a lower cost than production. They were selling them for less than they were making them with one intention, which was to destroy our, our television manufacturing industry. Did you, did you know that? It's very much, it's very similar to what the Saudis have been doing to destroy our domestic uh, energy producing industries, which is lowering the price of oil, producing too much oil in order to drive, for example, the frackers out of business. To get them out of business, they just drove the price down where it was no longer economically feasible. And what's going to happen now is they're going to do exactly what the great liberal George Soros did. They'll move in and buy all the fracking companies for a penny on the dollar and then they'll go back into the fracking business this is uh, how capitalism works around the world so to make a long story short we once had an electronics industry it was destroyed by japan who dumped their televisions and radios and their uh, it, their other things on us at less than cost of manufacturing it's been done with automobiles that they almost drove our big three out of business did you know that with the same exact rapacious techniques tactics they were sending cars over here for less than the cost to produce them in order to destroy our auto industry and only a sick nation permits this to happen. I am totally in favor of American manufacturing. Do you remember what happened under Bill Clinton? Do you remember the Chinese were buying factories out of the Middle West? They were, they were exporting entire factories with all of the equipment and all of the technology to China to put the industries in China where the labor was cheaper. I wouldn't have let that happen. Now imagine the reverse flow. Imagine to see all of these tens of thousands of small manufacturing businesses come, coming back to America. Imagine all of the out-of-work machinists and others with skills who are not working going back to work because they have a factory to work in. Can you imagine what that would do for our decaying rust belt, so to speak? Wouldn't you love to see the rust belt come back to life, so to speak, the rust belt, where America's industrial might once reigned? and built uh, the, the great machine that uh, helped us win World War II. So this is what will happen if Trump wins and he follows through. And the big thing is, will he follow through with tariffs on China? You hear? So let me go now for a moment and explain it in more detail. That was purely off the top of my head. I didn't refer to any notes. Nobody gave me any script on it. But I want to go to 40 solutions to save America from the back of government zero. Everyone now is talking about nationalism, right? I suddenly heard it everywhere. Well, no, they're not conservatives now. You know what they are? They're really nationalists. All right, page 313 of Government Zero, 40 Actions to Save America. Here are the top 40 that I wrote. One, Michael Savage, start a nationalist party. I said, 
We need a true two-party system. Right now we have a one-party system. It's a charade. A shell game with no peas under either shell. Two, close the borders completely for seven years. Do I have to explain that one in detail? Three, deport all illegal aliens in American prisons. Why? Why wouldn't you want to get rid of one-third of the prison population, since they're not even citizens? Four, repeal the anchor babies law. Now, there's no such law, but you know what I'm talking about. Five, make English the official language of the United States. Six, require government-issued identification to vote. That is such a big one. That is such a huge thing that the Democrats have fought like tooth and nail. Restore to active duty all military officers purged by Obama. Re restore physical standards in the military. Restructure military spending. Cut the rest of government significantly. Repair our relations with Russia. That's number 12. 13. Sign a mutual defense treaty with Israel. 14. End all foreign aid, including to Israel. 15. Recognize radical Islam as the enemy. 16. Allow profiling and security investigations. 17. Demand Congress declare war against ISIS and destroy them. 18. Close all tax loopholes for Hollywood. 19. Fund all climate science research to include the skeptics. And here's for all of you Ted Cruz supporters. 20. Withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership. We don't know the terms of Obama's secret trade deal. If there is a way to withdraw honorably under its terms, the next president should get out of it. Ted Cruz voted for the TPP, by the way. 21. Withdraw from NAFTA. 22. Narrow the Federal Reserve's mandate to a strong dollar and stable prices. 23. End the H-1B visa program. 24. And this is a big one. Institute a 15% flat tax on everyone. That means everyone pays their fair share, as the progressives love to say. It eliminates all loopholes for all sorts of special interests, including corporate America and Hollywood. Right now, almost half of U.S. citizens pay no income tax at all, while the other half pays progressively more as they become more productive. 25, reinstate the Glass-Steagall Act. 26, reinstate the Wall Street uptick rule. I can go on and on. 28, institute tort, re tort reform and affirmative action. So as you see, I didn't just put tariffs in there because I chose to put them there. They're way down on the list. To me, national security is number one. The number one issue that I care about is national security and immigration. They're inter intertwined. And unless we close the borders, we are finished as a nation. Look what happened to Europe, the rapes. Look what's happening to England, the loss of a nation, a nation's identity. I do not want that, that to happen. I am an immigrant son. I love America. And as far as taxation goes, and I, I, I thought about this in the middle of the night. I kept thinking about it. Why should I, who was once a poor man, uh, pay more taxes as a not poor man than a guy who's working, let's say, and is just working. Why don't we all pay the same amount of taxes? Why am I punished for my success? Why is it the more I make, the higher the rate should be? In other words, sure, if I make more money, I should pay more taxes, but a flat tax would do that. If a man makes 50000 a year and the flat tax is 10%, he pays 5000 a year in federal taxes. If a man, uh, uh, did I say 10% is a flat tax? Yes. So if a man then makes 500000 a year, and the flat tax is 10%. He pays 50000 a year. So he's already paying more taxes. He made more money. He pays more taxes. Then if he makes $5 million a year, he pays $500,000 in taxes. He's again paying more taxes than the guy making 50000 a year. It's not he's paying less. He is paying more. But you don't suddenly jack up his tax rate, where if he's making $5 million, he's now paying $2.5 million in taxes. That's a disincentive. Moreover, in America, we have the highest corporate tax rate in the world, including Great Britain, including socialist France. We have the highest corporate tax rate in the world. It is identical to the federal private uh, personal income tax at 39.6%. It's criminal. It's killing business. It must be lowered. It shouldn't be higher than 20% back in a minute. Well, if you want to sleep well tonight and you voted for Obama, here's a little news story for you. Obama has just released al-Qaeda's most skilled explosives expert uh, from prison. Whoopi Goldberg, oh, I'm crossing my fingers. She says, maybe it's time for me to leave the U.S. if Trump wins. Oh, I pray, Whoopi. Let me buy your ticket.
I'll make sure it's first class with a sleeper seat to any country of your choice, Whoopi, under one condition. You never come back because we don't need the Whoopi cushion known as Whoopi Goldberg. Obama releases al-Qaeda's most skilled explosives expert, and you want to vote for Democrats. Amazing. A man personally praised by Osama bin Laden, a man who created the shoe bomb design. The Pentagon said today that Egyptian Tariq Mahmoud Ahmed al who may have known uh, of the September 01 plot, was transferred from Gitmo Bay to the government of Bosnia? He fought with the Bosnian army in the early 1990s and eventually made his way to Afghanistan in 2000. Like other members of Al-Qaeda, Al-Sawah began his terrorism career as a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, which is not only present in the U.S., but is in the White House, according to very well-known sources. So now he's released because of his illness. Uh, the uh, doctors from NYU and Miami University said he has obesity, diabetes, fatty liver disease, chronic pain from spinal cord compression. Okay, so it's our fault that he was in prison. He was, toast, he was very close to Bin Laden, an explosives expert. He developed a mine to sink U.S. ships. He developed a shoe bomb prototype that Richard Reed attempted tonight while on a flight from Paris to Miami. So he's in Gitmo in plain, in plain English. And Obama just released him. Sends him to Bosnia? And you think the Bosnian Muslims are going to keep him under control? Take a look at Secretary Ashton Carter. And now you understand what's going on in the world a little better. One yes man after another. Only in an insane nation could a man get away like this. Only in a man in America could a man literally commit treason in front of our eyes one day after another. Violate every sense of justice, every sense of reason for protecting the American people and not be stopped. Now, look what they're asking in the newspaper. Did President Obama get swindled in the Iran deal? No, he was put there for the Iran deal. That's an idiotic question. He didn't get swindled. He got them just what they wanted. He was rewarded for it. That's how he became president. Obama releases al-Qaeda's most skilled explosives expert. And you want to vote for Hillary Clinton. I give up. If that's what you want, I don't, I don't understand how people can be so suicidal and still think that they're sane. It is the Savage Nation. Do you know that I'm almost out of time? I'm not 112, but I've gone for full three hours every day of the week. Uncanny energy. People don't know where it comes from. How does he do it? How does he get up? Men half my age, they're walking around holding their back saying it hurts them. I can't do it. Nothing matter. I can't get up. I'm not doing well. Have the faith, baby. That's how you do it. And secondly, I have two hearts beating in my chest. One for me and one for my deceased brother. Savage.